Hi, I'm Dave Holtz, and I'll be your host for this look at historic structures in Red Wing. We'll start this video with a look at the evolution of this area's natural historic structures. The Mississippi River has always been a focal point of Red Wing's development. The sharpest navigable bend on the river is located right in our town. The receding of the second North American Ice Age about 10,000 years ago carved these magnificent bluffs which define Red Wing. Originally mined for their limestone and other minerals, these two bluffs were preserved for the people due to the efforts of many preservationist groups. Today, they are some of our most popular tourist attractions and are used by hikers, sightseers, and picnickers. Between 750 and 1,000 years ago, this area at the head of Lake Pepin was a thriving population center for the ancient Mississippian culture. Some of the earthen mounds they built as burial or defense sites still exist today as historic sites. For more information about the Mississippians, you may contact the Institute for Minnesota Archaeology or you may visit or contact the Goodyear County Historical Society. The Dakota Nation lived and thrived in this area and built summer lodges along the river made from bark. These structures were destroyed in a fire in 1853 and the Native Americans were forced to move to a reservation along the upper Minnesota River. Eventually, the Dakota came back to live near Red Wing on Prairie Island. The Red Wing name comes from three tribal chiefs who chose as their emblem a swan's wing stained with red dye. Today, a thriving gambling industry has helped build an expanding casino and hotel which in turn supports a community center and other structures. This symbolic teepee located at Red Wings Bay Point Park reflects the influence of the Dakota Nation on this area. For more information about the Prairie Island Indian community you may contact them at 651-385-2554. The first white settlers arrived in 1837 and built two log houses near the intersection of Bush and Third Streets in order to do their missionary work. These first two families left and in 1849, J.F. Aiton and Joseph Hancock with their families occupied these structures and the white settlement of Red Wing began. By 1860, Red Wing's population had grown to 1,200. These original homes in Red Wing have not survived, but the influence of Hancock and the settlers that followed helped establish Red Wing as a city in 1857. We will now focus on some of the historic industrial and commercial buildings that have survived the test of time and still exist in Red Wing. The ironworks building built in 1866 represents the oldest industrial building still standing in Red Wing. The Densmore brothers established this foundry business which produced specialty iron products. Today it serves as a storage facility for the nearby St. James Hotel. The Keystone building, a fine example of commercial Italianate architecture, was built in 1867 by local architect Daniel Hill. It was home to Minnesota's first Department of Health, operated by Dr. Charles Hewitt. The building, with its heavy stone ornamentation, survives today as a home for commercial ventures and apartments. This frame building at Fifth and Franklin was the first home of Gustavus College, built in 1862. Central to Red Wing's early growth. The grain industry is still an important part of the physical and economic vitality of the area. In 1873, Red Wing was one of the largest wheat shipping ports in the world. Fleischmann's Mill provided malt, much of it going towards the production of Cuban rum and beer in St. Louis. Today, ADM, Continental, which is owned by Cargill, and other grain marketers depend on the Mississippi River and still call Red Wing home. 
A fire in March of 2000 destroyed the abandoned Fleshman's Malting Building. The Charles Betcher and Baker Wilson blocks on Main Street were constructed in the commercial Italianate style in 1868. The Riverfront Center is a combination of a number of smaller businesses on Block 43. These buildings were constructed in the latter part of the 1850s. In 1875, the Koppel Wagon Works building graced the eastern edge of the Red Wings Commercial District. A variety of wagon products were produced and sold. The building was recently updated and now houses the Knudsen Carmel Candy Company. Of all the commercial buildings constructed in the late 1800s, the Koppel Wagon Works is the only one left on the eastern edge of the commercial district. A signature industry for Red Wing, past and present, is the pottery business. A building at this site was first erected in 1893 and burned to the ground in 1900 and was immediately rebuilt. In 1906, three competing stoneware companies combined to form Red Wing Union Stoneware and built this pottery complex. The original North Star Stoneware Factory housed this star. This monument pays tribute to the pottery industry. First products were crocks used for storing and preserving food, and in the 1930s they started making fancier bowls and plates. A strike by workers in 1967 shut down production forever. All the remaining inventory was sold in the neighboring Red Wing Pottery sales room, which still operates today. Pottery Place was sold to a Winona developer in the fall of 1967, who turned it into Minnesota's first retail outlet mall. The Republican newspaper was started in this building at 433 West 3rd Street in 1857 by Lucius Hubbard a Civil War veteran and later the ninth governor of Minnesota. This building at 319 Third Street was originally built in 1889 and beginning in 1911, it was the home of the Red Wing Daily Eagle newspaper started by N.P. Olson. The Daily Eagle was merged with the Republican in 1940. Today, the Republican Eagle newspaper is produced by Red Wing Publishing in its modern facility. They also produced many other newspapers and a variety of other publications. Mr. James Lother, a real estate man of the late 1800s, had the Gladstone Building constructed in 1886. It was constructed from local limestone and is distinctive because of its Romanesque arches. Among his civic accomplishments, Mr. Lother donated funds and land for many Red Wing buildings, including the original YMCA building built in 1910 and the Carnegie Lother Library. This is the Frederick Annex, which was built in 1924 as a new addition to the original 1906 City Hospital building. Today the building is still used as the community clothing shelf. The Goodyear County National Bank first began operation in the music hall located near this plaque in 1878. In 1904, they moved to the corner of 3rd and Bush and have been serving Red Wing ever since. In 2000, they changed their name to the parent company, Signal Bank. The Red Wing YMCA was built in 1910 with a $60,000 donation from Mr. James Lother. Renovations in 1980 changed the entrance along with many other modifications. Bottling of soft drinks has been a Red Wing tradition for generations. This building on Bluff Street was originally operated by the Pratt Brothers as a bottling facility. From 1899 to 1959, the Reichert family operated this facility and bottled and sold their own line of soda pop. In 1959, John Grantman bought the building and the bottling operation, and today Coca-Cola Bottling of Red Wing is still owned by the Grantman family and is a major distributor in this area. 
As the grain trade helped Red Wing flourish, there came a cry for a first-class hotel. In 1875, a partnership of 11 prominent Red Wing businessmen answered that cry with the building of the St. James Hotel, which opened with a grand ball on Thanksgiving Day. It became an instant landmark, and trains stopped for no other reason than to let passengers dine in the fine surroundings of the St. James. The Lillyblad family managed the hotel for over 70 years. It was purchased in 1977 by the Red Wing Shoe Company. Four-star elegance was returned to the St. James with major renovations that continue to this day. An $83,000 gift from the estate of Theodore B. Sheldon was a catalyst behind this Red Wing jewel. In 1900, T.B. bequeathed one half of his estate to the citizens of Red Wing for a civic good. A committee that included his second wife, Annie, decided to build this magnificent structure. Some plans were scaled back, but Sheldon's gift and $9,000 from the city completed the T.B. Sheldon Auditorium in 1904. Immediately, some of the finest acts in the nation, including John Philip Sousa's military band, William Jennings Bryant, and many plays and circuses graced the stage. In February of 1918, a fire of unknown origin gutted the inside, and the Sheldon was close to being demolished. The board of directors decided to rebuild the theater, and it was reopened the following September. In 1986, a community bond was issued for $1.5 million to renovate the Sheldon. It was approved by 82%. An additional $2 million was secured from individual and corporate donations. Just as renovation was about to begin, a fire gutted the interior for the second time, and an extra $1.5 million was needed for repair. The theater reopened in October of 1988 and remains one of the few municipally owned theaters in the nation offering a wide variety of entertaining and educational events. The Minnesota Correctional Facility, with its castle-like buildings, was constructed in 1889. One of the first correctional facilities in the state, its goal was to provide help and training for boys and girls rather than punishment. Today it houses just boys ages 11 to 21. Four of the original buildings still remain and the fence was added in 1999. The large dining room fireplace was rebuilt in 1985. In 1905, eight local businessmen got together to manufacture perhaps Red Wing's most noteworthy product, Red Wing Shoes. They built their first building that same year and continued to make shoes and boots there. In 1960, they built a warehouse in the new industrial park, and in 1965, added a second manufacturing plant next to it. The Sweezy family continues their ownership today of this privately held company. In 1906, this Chicago Great Northwestern Railroad Station was built to house their local headquarters. In 1979, the building was sold and remodeled to become the only Hardy's restaurant housed in a depot. The Carnegie Lothar Library was built on 3rd and West Avenue in 1903. It was torn down in 1968 and a new library was built in its place. Recent renovations make this library a cultural center in Red Wing. In 1907, Red Wing City Hall was built in the Renaissance Revival style. There are nine bay windows across the front and five deep. A.P. Anderson started construction of this home in 1916, finished construction in 1921, and now this home serves as a lodging for the Anderson Center. 
These buildings were used for experiments that created the patent for a puffing process of grains, which eventually led to puffed wheat and other puffed food products. Today, Anderson Center is home to a variety of functions pertaining to artists and literature. This building, built in 1910, was originally the Red Wing Old People's Home. Today, with new additions, it's home to the Goodyear County Historical Society. The Society was organized in 1869 with Reverend Joseph Hancock as its motivating force. The Historical Society opened its first museum in the new Goodyear County Courthouse in 1932 and moved to this location in 1969. This depot was built in 1905 for the Chicago-Milwaukee-St. Paul Railroad. It was designed by a railroad architect who got his ideas from the 1893 Chicago World Fair. The architect was influenced by the Columbian Exposition of 1893. Today, it still functions as a depot for Amtrak and bus lines, as well as a home for the Red Wing Chamber of Commerce and Visitor and Convention Bureau. The original Red Wing Armory, built in 1901, has now been converted to a commercial building. The Citizens Building was built in 1930 and was home to Citizens Fund Mutual Fire Insurance Company. The ornate doors are a Red Wing landmark and the building interior utilizes Art Deco design. It is now owned by Goodyear County. The Goodyear County Courthouse was built in 1932 for $292,000 and was constructed of Bedford, Indiana limestone. It replaced the original structure built in 1859. In 1999, the Goodyear County Law Enforcement and Judicial Centers opened where the old Central High School Auditorium, Gymnasium, and parking lot were located. This structure, called the 1916 building, once housed part of the Red Wing High School. Today it is owned by Goodyear County and its future is uncertain. Neighboring Washington School was built in 1886 and torn down in 1998. Burnside School was originally built in 1931 and is now home to Red Wing Business Systems and other companies. Hancock School was built in 1937 and is now the Catholic Parochial Grade School. Colville School was built in 1937 and is now the Colville Family Center. The original Jefferson School was added on to in 1948 and extensively remodeled in 1966. The new Burnside School was built in 1994. The new Red Wing High School was built in 1995. The two-story classic revival style Red Wing Post Office was completed in 1910. It was designed with five bays, a central three-bay projection with arcades and pilasters. Masonic Hall, constructed in 1928. And now we're going to take a look at some of the landmark homes in Red Wing. The Octagon House is a very unusual building. And here we have a picture of the James Lother home built in 1856. This unusual and impressive brick octagon structure was constructed to mimic nature's most ideal form, the sphere. The stairway was originally placed in the center of the home for better airflow and designed this way for health reasons. This home was built by the bachelor Lother at the age of 26. At the time of his death, he owned 19 businesses, 20 homes, and 90 farms. You, you noticed that it had a cupola on top, 
And with the Mississippi River nearby, it was great for showing, uh, for seeing the ships going up and down the river. A pre-Civil War Victorian octagon home with five guest rooms, all with private baths. This is one of the oldest houses in Red Wing. The C.J. Ford Smith House was constructed in 1857 at 617 Third Street. This Greek Revival style home features a front facing gable with wide cornice boards and returns along with an offset front entrance. The Dr. Charles N. Hewitt Laboratory was built in 1857 at 216 Dakota Street. Dr. Hewitt was a surgeon in the Civil War and was responsible for the creation of the Minnesota Board of Health. It was here that he established his first laboratory for producing smallpox vaccine in Minnesota. The Christopher C. Graham House was built in 1858. This home combines elements of the Greek Revival and Gothic Revival styles. The Mrs. N. S. Messick Home was built in 1858 at 621 4th Street. This Greek Revival style home retains its broad cornice boards and cornice returns. We're standing in front of the Green Wilder home, constructed in 1857. It's a exa good example of the Greek Revival style of architecture. Here we have an example of the Gothic Revival style of architecture. This home is known as the Bran Warner home, built between the, the years of 1858 and 1860. Notice the steep roofs, the icicle style of brackets along the roof line. This is what is known as the Peter Daniels home, constructed in 1866, and it is of the early Italianic style of home. The Betcher Ames home was constructed in 1867 at 905 Third Street. This home combines the Greek Revival and Italianate style of architecture. Charles Betcher established one of Red Wing's earliest and longest lived lumber and millwork businesses. We are now standing in front of the Sprague home, which is located on what we have been told as the most significant architectural corner in the state of Minnesota. Philander Sprague was an industrialist who in, in 1868 built this home. His business was when making terracotta ornaments for homes. You'll notice some of his work on the windows, those ornate uh, caps over the windows were from his factory. With the Sprague home, we also get a very fine three-story carriage house. We can see two stories here and there's also a basement that leads out to the alley in behind. Across the street from the Philander Sprague house is the, the Foot home. This home was built in 1916 and is the bungalow style of architecture. The Henry P. McIntyre House was built from 1868 to 1870 at 919 Fourth Street. This home also combines the Greek Revival and Italianate architectural styles. McIntyre was a partner of T.B. Shelton and later helped found the First National Bank of Red Wing. The A.B. Hawley House was constructed in 1874 at 1105 4th Street. This home also combines Greek Revival and Italianate architectural style. This home is now Red Wing's largest bed and breakfast called the Moon Dance Inn, featuring large common areas for weddings and business meetings. 
Here we have one of the more interesting homes in Red Wing. It's the T.B. Sheldon Mansion. This home was built in 1875. When it was originally built, it had three stories. The third story was covered with a mansard roof. And for some reason or other, the story goes that this roof, roof had a tendency to leak. So in 1958, they decided to take off the roof and even took off the third story. The house didn't lose too much as far as space goes because that was a dance hall or a party room that the Sheldons used in the latter part of the 18th century, 1800s to have their parties. The F. W. Hoyt House was built in 1875 at 803 Fifth Street, constructed in the Italianate style for banker E. W. Hoyt this house was later occupied by Lucius F. Hubbard, a pioneer Red Wing newspaper man and Civil War military hero who served as the governor of Minnesota from 1881 to 1887. Next to the Hoyt House is the Augustine House, built in 1906 of the classical revival style. The Pratt Tabor House was built in 1876 at 706 4th Street. Constructed in the Italianate style, this house displays a low-pitched roof with bracketed eaves, sedimental arched windows, and a wraparound porch. Albert Pratt was a prominent local banker. In 1877, Mr. Horace Rich constructed this home which is now called the Candlelight Inn, which is a bed and breakfast. Originally Italianate in style, the classic revival porch was added in the early 20th century. Step back in time at this B&B, &B, which features original woodwork and authentic Quiesel light fixtures. The Horace S. Rich Home was built in 1880 at 722 Fifth Street. This home combines the asymmetrical massing and varied sizing materials associated with the Queen Anne style. This home is now the Red Wing Blackbird Bed and Breakfast, which features a Scandinavian flavor of interior design. The James E. Teal House was built in 1889 at 709 4th Street. Note the home's multi-gabled roof and shingle styles. The John Rich's home, built in 1900. Notice the two-story round porch that dominates the front facade. Notable details include the ironic columns Front entrance with the leaded glass side lights and the corner polisters with phrase boards along the top. I've been in this home and it has a beautiful hallway leading from the front door back with rooms on either side similar to the homes built down in the south by the plantation owners. Some people call it the Georgian style of home. Right next door to the John Rich's home is the Charles Betcher home, built in 1908. It is of the Tudor style, cottage style home. We have here a superb example of the Prairie School of Architecture. This home was built in 1913 by Mr. E. S. Hoyt. Homes being built of this style were very popular. That period of time was from 1900 to the First World War. You'll notice by looking at the windows that this style of home has leaded windows around the sides with an overhang, giving it the flat appearance from a distance.
The F.B. McNeil House was built in 1920 at 320 Pine Street. This is a frame bungalow constructed for the superintendent of the local sewer pipe factory. Okay. Arnson Casa Home, typical of many of the homes built in the 1880s. This home was built in 1883. A fine example of the Tudor cottage style of home is the Blondell House built in 1935. This home was constructed in limestone by a local contractor named Johannes Johnson for his daughter. Its asymmetrical profile and steeply pitched roof along with the irregular character of the stone facing on the walls adds to the picturesque quality of the house. This home was built in 1867 and is known by the Brooks Sheldon name. The arched windows and bracketed trim around the roof are typical of the Italianic style of home. This is one of Red Wing's finest examples of Greek Revival architecture, constructed by C.V. Booth in 1857. This is the George Herman Box Road Home, built in 1925, and is a fine example of the Cape Cod style of a home. The trim of this home is the, a good example of the Gothic Revival style of architecture. This home was built approximately between 1865 and 18, 1870. Even though this home is small, it's a well, very well preserved frame cottage which retains its original Gothic Revival ornamentation. Distinctive details include the pointed arch window used in the center gable and the Italianic style influenced veranda which is the porch, which wraps around the front of the front and the side of the house. The J. E. N's house, constructed in 1868, fine example of the early Italianic style of home. This is a fine example of the four square style of architecture. Happens to be the Stephen E. Noble House, built in 1910. This is a C.A. Rasmussen home, built in 1894. Fine example of a Queen, Island, Queen Anne style of home. A polygonal open tower, supported by rather muscular turned columns. It's capped with the sunburst panels and a witch's cap roof. The turn ball spindles used in the porch railings and the almost snowflake-like design of the porch's corner brackets are unusual. This home was built in 1935 by Raymond Johnson. It is a Tudor Revival or English cottage style of home. Notice the half timbers and the stucco between those half timbers. This is a great Jacob Sieg home constructed in 1894. Although it lacks the tower, a common feature of the Red Wing Queen Anne style homes, this home is a well-preserved example of that style. Fish gale ar uh, shingle ornaments and roof gables and a belt course between the first and second stories are fine examples of also of the Queen Anne style home. A bracketed cornice highlights the roof eaves. Decorative spindle work is used for the porch as well as to create a balconette railing for the attic windows. 
This is the J.R. Sweezy home built in 1928. It's a fine example of the Tudor revival or the English cottage style of home. You'll notice the native stone first floor and the second floor of the half timbers with stucco. This home is now the Golden Lantern Bed and Breakfast, featuring original woodwork, whirlpool, hot tubs, and fireplaces. <laughs> this home was built in 1865. It's right next to the Sheldon home and was owned by the Brown family. We have an example of the prairie style home made very popular by Frank Lloyd Wright. It was built in 1915 and originally for Charles Carl Betcher. This home is an example of the classical revival style of architecture. It was influenced by the Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893. This particular home was built in 1894. It was built originally by W.C. Chris family. This is a style of home called the Italianic and it was called the Widow Town Home when it was first built in 1875. You can tell partly about the Italianic style of home by the porch that wraps around the front and part of the side of the building. It is on the Register of Historic Places. This is a fine example of the classic revival type of architecture built in 1896 by C.F. Frederick. This home is a prairie school style home built in 1915 known as a Hel Helen Frederick house. The Reason Spates home a fine example of the Greek Orthodox construction built in 1859. The Greek Revival style of home, you can notice here, is shown by the top roof lines that give somewhat the example of the Greek construction of the Pantheon. The Alfred Carlson home, a typical Queen Anne style, built in 1891. The front porch railing and spindle frieze, which combined turned and wood pieces and the variety of moldings used to ornament each elevation in a slightly different way. Stained glass transoms are used above the front win picture window and in the bay window on the south side of the house. Of special interest are the polygonal tower complete with sunburst panels and copper roof finale. And now we're going to take a brief look at historic churches in Red Wing. First Presbyterian. Joseph Hancock, a Presbyterian missionary, started the church in 1849. The present building was erected in 1857 and was the first church building in Red Wing. To this day, it's the oldest remaining church building still in use in Goodyear County. Christ Episcopal Church, located in almost the center of Red Wing. The first rector was Edward R. Wells, who conducted services in a wood frame church in 1858. This stone edifice was erected in 1871 with a small chapel added in 1903. The parish house was added in 1910. The design was copied from a church in England. The Church of Christ was built in 1875 as a wooden structure and remains that way today. Four Square Church. The original home of Trinity Lutheran. Its name was changed to United Lutheran in 1930 
when it united with St. Peter's Lutheran. St. John's Lutheran. Records date the first meeting of this group to 1855. The first services were held in 1861 by Reverend William A. Passavant. This present building was erected in 1878 and a parochial school was added in 1947. Services were conducted in German until 1901. First Lutheran. The Reverend Eric Norilius was its first pastor, with this building being built in 1895. The congregation helped establish Gustavus College. The Lutheran Hall edition was added in 1963. The first congregation of this church was the Swedish Lutheran denomination. United Lutheran. The Reverend Laurity Lawrence was the first pastor of this congregation back in 1860. This building was constructed in 1906 with the addition of the North End and the chapel in 1980. In 1998, teaching rooms, a new kitchen, and a fellowship hall were added. Built in 1908 of local limestone is the First Methodist Church of Red Wing. This building is the third Methodist church located at this corner. The first of Greek Revival style was built in 1858 and destroyed by a storm. The second built in 1860 was destroyed by fire then destroyed by fire again in 1907. St. Paul's Lutheran Church. This facility has been, was built in 1927, but the congregation dates back to 1883 when Reverend G. H. Trabert was called as its first minister. The new building addition of 1999 consists of offices, conference, and teaching rooms. St. Joseph Catholic Church. This 1965 church replaced the 1877 brick building located a block away, which in turn had replaced a small wooden frame structure erected in 1865. The new church is located where the old convent stood. A new parish hall is being constructed in the year 2000. Our Redeemer's Lutheran Church and School. And finally, some of the Red Wing Parks and other landmarks. Levy Park. On the river where the Queen Boats dock, Levy Park was built as part of the City Beautiful campaign. Work started in 1904 as an effort to give newly arriving visitors a better first impression of Red Wing. It is the site of the Mayor's Walk with all the Red Wing Mayor's names in stone. It is also the site of the Sea Wing Memorial, a boat disaster in 1890 that claimed 98 lives, 73 of them from Red Wing. Colville Park. Named after Colonel Colville, a legendary Civil War leader whose homestead was on this site. Colville Park is one of central Minnesota's finest. Most famous for its river view and the Eagles' frequent visits, Colville offers picnic and playground facilities, tennis and basketball courts, and a new aquatic facility. Bay Point Park. A beautiful view of the river and Red Wing can be seen from the popular walking trails at Bay Point Park. Built on a farmer city dump, Bay Point offers sheltered picnic facilities, a statue of young Charles Lindbergh, and a symbolic teepee structure. The community celebration, River City Days, is hosted at Bay Point each August. Central Park. Right in the middle of Red Wing is Central Park. It was Red Wing's first park purchased in 1871. The bandstand on the south was constructed in 1880 
and restored in 1988. The North Bandstand was built in 1938. Minnesota's first post-secondary institution, Hamlin University, got its start in Red Wing from 1856 to 1869. The Hamlin site, on what is now Upper Central Park, was partially unearthed in an archaeological dig in 1997. Right next to Central is John Rich Park, which was funded by John Rich, a founding member of the Red Wing Civic League. This fountain and flower garden were added in 1907. Weddings and civic events occur here. The north end of the park hosts a war memorial built in 1988 that honors Red Wing citizens who gave their life for their country. LaGrange Park. Between the St. James Hotel and Riverfront Center is LaGrange Park. Sculptures and a beautiful water fountain highlight this gathering area. Boathouse Village, one of the few gin pole boathouse installations in the country. The name gin pole reflects the early residents' habit of hanging their gin bottles from these poles into the river to keep them cool. Red Wings Boathouse Village is a picturesque view for walkers at Bay Point Park and often the subject for photographers and painters. In order to build the Eisenhower Bridge, part of the base of Barnes Bluff had to be shaved off. The original bridge built in 1895 had a sharp curve at the Wisconsin approach. In July of 1960, President Eisenhower came to Red Wing to help dedicate this new bridge. Cannon Valley Trail, a beautiful 20-mile bike trail the Cannon Valley Trail is a favorite destination for many Red Wing visitors. Originally an abandoned Chicago Northwestern Railroad property, it was purchased in the 1960s by a group from Red Wing and Cannon Falls. This trail links the two communities for non-motorized transportation and has about a thousand people use the trail on an average summer Saturday. Archaeological dig sites run adjacent to the trail. Canoeing and tubing are also popular Cannon River attractions. A Red Wing trademark is our hanging flower baskets which grace our downtown area. Hung from lampposts, these baskets are a joint project of the Red Wing Noontime Kiwanis and the city of Red Wing. Starting in 1990 with 12 baskets, their popularity has grown to now include over 340 baskets throughout the city. The flowers are grown locally and maintained by city staff. Promo Video Television is the proud producer of a video guide to historic structures in Red Wing 